Welcome back guys to another HTM terminal video. Today we will be creating a paste bin scraper. Now you probably, if you've done anything with paste bin, know about the raw mode, which uh, just returns the raw content, which is what we want to do. But let's say, just imagine paste bin did not have this feature. Well, someone would have to do it themselves which is what we're here to do. This is mainly just to learn how to use some tools and learn how to do basic web scraping on your own. So I'm going to be going through this step by step and teaching you how to use tools like JSDOM and Express to create your own scraping service. So let's start by making a recapture, or yeah, a paste bin scraper and we will launch that in Visual Studio Code and uh, yeah now let's look at what tools we're gonna be using hold on we will be using Express. We need a web server, and this is the best way to create a simple web server. JS DOM, which makes it a lot easier to parse JavaScript and HTML without needing a bunch of code like Puppeteer and Electron do. And then Node Fetch, which is just a recreation of the Fetch API from the web browser in Node.js. And last but not least, for development, env, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just loads a .env file into a Node.js environment. So, overview is we will be using these four tools, which will allow for rapid development. And I already actually have the commands here. So, once we open this in a terminal and initialize the entire thing, we can just copy-paste and it will install the entire thing just like that. And while it's installing that, we can go copy-paste this other command. Paste that in, and it will quickly install. And if you guys haven't noticed, I'm using Yarn, not NPM, since it's just my personal package manager of choice. But you can obviously do this with NPM. It really doesn't matter. But now we need an index.js and a .env file. In our env file, we're going to put the port 8080. Which is just for the development side, obviously. Because services like Heroku will automatically provide you with a port which you'll be seeing later. So, if process.env.heroku equals undefined, we will require .env and configure it. Now, we'll grab our dependencies, which is just Express JS DOM and Node Fetch. Now we can grab the app from Express and listen on the provided port. Make, that, make sure that's all uppercase. <laughs> now, on our web server, we'll add a wildcard. Request and resolve. And send a status of 404. But now, we actually need to provide some content. So, we'll just add a basic page right here which will return the scraped content. 
Now, let's figure out how this works. We're going to need to head over to this page and figure out how it identifies uh, what page is what. So, up here, it seems like it's just this little part of the URL, meaning the rest of this can be copy-pasted and all that needs to be sent is an ID sort of thing. So, we'll get an ID from the query parameter ID, and we will fetch the pastebin with that ID. We will proceed to get the text, and then thanks to how node fetch works, you have to do this little extra snippet to get the actual stuff. Let's add semicolons. And now we can get a DOM from making a new JS DOM element using that HTML. So it should be decently working. And if you don't know how JS DOM works is it creates a window which you then get the document from where you can run all of the normal commands. So what is the ID or class name or whatever it uses to identify this? We can control shift I, click this little symbol if you're on Chrome, and click the element. It's a text area, which means it's pretty simple to get the inner HTML. And here's a simple little ID. Get element by ID. And now we can just return the inner HTML. So let's try running this. And you see, giving it the ID, it runs just fine. I have no clue what's going on. All right, uh, I guess it was just my network freaking out. So let's close down the server. Now, there is an edge case we did not look into. The page can be removed or it can, or it will say this if it never existed in the first place. So we're going to need to add an if statement in here. So let's just get some boilerplate on this. And let's control shift I this. So this looks like it's probably only going to be on the removed pages, meaning it's probably going to be a good thing to search for. So it looks like that was by a class. So we'll get by class name. And let's just assume it's the first one. And I hope we're right. And if the inner HTML equals, well, it's inner HTML, then we will just send a status of 404. Pretty simple. Now we can just throw that into the else statement. Hope it doesn't crap itself again. There we go. And if we give it an ID of one that doesn't exist, it'll just say not found. Now, let's put this on an actual web server. We're going to start doing that on Heroku. 
by uploading it to GitHub. So I'm going to initialize a Git repo and paste in the command to add the origin. And we're going to need to make three files, a proc file, a license, and a git ignore. So wait for those to be created. And in git ignore, you're going to exclude all node modules. Dot end, and that's it. And in the proc file, you're going to type web node dot. So this is telling Heroku how to run the server. And now for the license. And I'm just going to copy paste MIT license. 2020 and then my full name. Now we can git add git commit working on video and git push origin master. Now we wait for this to upload and we can head over to Heroku and create a fresh app. Paste bin scraper demo. We're going to have to head to settings, reveal variables and add Heroku to true. And don't forget to add a Node.js build pack. Now we just deploy on GitHub with paste bin scraper. And deploy branch. We can watch the output pretty easily down here. And it says build succeeded. It's just compressing the files. And it is deployed. Let's head over to this page. It should send a 404. Good. Now let's get this one. Send it the ID. And it scraped it perfectly. All on a Heroku app. So thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.